This is an engineering test transmission of the Independent Broadcasting Authority. These tests are to prepare for the start of independent local radio in the Greater Manchester area on the morning of Tuesday, April the 2nd, by Piccadilly Radio. The programmes of Piccadilly Radio, from Piccadilly in the centre of Manchester, will be heard on 261 metres medium wave and also on 97 megahertz exactly VHF, the same frequencies as these test transmissions. In a recent video, we looked at the state of AM radio in the UK on medium wave and long wave, and the situation is pretty dire for the listening enthusiast, hopeless for those in rural areas with limited access to digital services, and even worse if we ever have a major emergency, such as a large-scale power outage. The comments section was teeming with opinions, frustrations, ideas and all sorts relating to this situation, and while I highlighted a couple of transmitter sites that are scheduled to be demolished, quite a few people suggested the notion that behind the scenes, just maybe, the powers that be were planning to keep some of these sites as essential backups in case of an emergency. I'm not so sure myself, but there's a transmitter site up here in Greater Manchester that shouldn't be here, and that is Ashton Moss MF. Now, this is a really interesting site, with lots of history, and I've covered it in detail in another video, which I'll link in the description. That video explains the complete history of this particular transmitter site, and the absolutely genius reason why that third tower you see in the distance is out of line with the rest. So, watch this, and then watch the other video. In a very brief nutshell, Piccadilly Radio launched on 261 medium wave from Ashton Moss on Tuesday, April the 2nd, 1974, at 1 1.5 kW. It broadcast originally on 1151 kHz and later 1152 kHz. Piccadilly Radio split into two services in 1988, with the contemporary music format of Key 103 on FM, leaving Piccadilly on AM, which eventually adopted a Golden Oldies format as Piccadilly Gold. In the mid-1990s, Piccadilly Gold became Piccadilly 1152, as it moved away from the Golden Oldies format to classic and current easy listening. In 1994, Key 103 and Piccadilly 1152 were sold to EMAP, which became Bauer by Transworld Radio Group. By 2000, EMAP had rebranded the AM station as Magic 1152. On the 5th of January 2015, it was rebranded again as Key 2, and on the 7th of January 2019, Key Radio rebranded as Greatest Hits Radio Manchester. In February 2021, Bauer announced it would close Greatest Hits Radio's medium wave service on 1152kHz after 47 years, and the AM transmitter at Ashton Moss ceased broadcasting on the 28th of April 2021. So, that's the history out of the way. Now let's look at why this transmitter shouldn't be here at all. Arkiva operated and still own the transmitter station, known to them as Ashton Moss MF. On September 30th, 2024, as part of regular estate management, Arkiva identified a requirement to remove the four existing steel lattice masts and the remaining Leica radio antenna. Leica radio is an Asian station broadcasting on 1377 kHz using this whip antenna. How, I'm not sure, as the capacitive hat to me looks broken. I didn't check at the time, but just under 5 miles down to the southwest at Werneth Low, I tuned in, and sure enough, Leica Radio is there on 1377. It's a small transmitter, just 80 watts. In fact, despite the disturbance in the warm air, you can just about see the towers at Ashton Moss. One, two, three, four. Following the demolition and removal of equipment at the transmitter site, the whole area will be restored to an open grass field. Three riggers and six senior riggers will conduct the demolition of the 71 metre towers themselves. There'll be a 55 metre exclusion zone behind the direction of fall. 41 metres either side the direction of fall, and 79 metres in the direction of fall. 
I've marked on the map each mast, including the small Leica vertical and the path on which they're going to fall. A short wire sling will be fitted to the underside of the insulator to the bottom horizontal bar of each mast to prevent the mast base from moving. Once they have the all clear for the felling process to begin, the stays will be cut so the masts fall in their projected directions. Days 1, 2 and 3 will be the days the four masts and the Leica antenna will be felled, and days 3, 4, 5 and 6 will be used to cut away and remove the pieces of steel in manageable pieces. Sounds like a plan. The problem is, however, is that the date given for this was November the 25th, 2024, and this plan was carefully put together. I've read dozens of pages on it. I turned up on the morning expecting to capture radio history, but the site looked like this in the early November sun. Empty. No sign of life whatsoever. I've driven past this array every week since, and it's not going anywhere. Now as you can see, the whole compound is heavily overgrown, meaning that any works would have to be recalculated due to the massive increase in vegetation. Nesting birds are more than likely currently calling this area home. There's badger sets in there too, no doubt. The demolition can actually be carried out within 5 years from October the 1st, 2024. The signs were updated around November the 5th, with the demolition date of December 2024, so I don't know what happened between September the 30th and November the 5th that meant that the November the 25th date was pushed back. Either way, December came and went, and no demolition took place. It could be that there's a third party landowner that's kicked up a fuss over something. Arkiva said themselves that demolition is not urgently necessary and the site doesn't pose a health and safety risk, but this was solidly planned in. They'd picked the riggers, all their equipment, delegated the works for each day and got a 6 ton track dumper lined up. The commencement and finish dates were set, even the port loos were planned in. This was laid out like a military operation. Maybe it'll happen in the winter when the vegetation dies back, or are they maybe, just maybe, keeping Ashton Moss on the back burner for future use or contingency planning? Maybe it's just wishful thinking. I'll update you when I find out more.